Hi, my name is Mark and I'm an ASC Certified Master Technician with over 35 years experience. Today, I'm going to show you how to properly diagnose and repair this vehicle using the tips and tricks that I've gathered throughout my career. Let's get started. So what we have here is a 2005 Pontiac G6 with a 3.5 liter engine in it. Our customer came in complaining about the drivability, fuel consumption, and they have a check engine light on the dash. Let's go ahead and scan this vehicle and see if we can diagnose the problems. The tools required for today is going to be a flashlight, safety glasses and gloves, an OBD2 scan tool with live data functionality, a digital multimeter, 3 8 ratchet, short extension, and a 19 millimeter socket, and a catch can for coolant. So let's go ahead, connect our DLC to our DLC connector, which is located down low to the left of the steering column. We're going to turn our ignition on. We're going to scan, see if any codes come up. Here's a code. PO118 engine coolant temperature circuit high input. With this unit here, we can actually go to the live data, check that even further. Let's go ahead and start our vehicle. I can go here and see our ECT is at a negative 38, which means nothing is going through that sensor right now. So let's go ahead, get up underneath the hood and check this even further. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do a visual inspection. Make sure that there's no leaky heater hoses, radiator hoses. Check the coolant level. I already done that. Everything is great here. We're going to want to look down at our coolant temperature sensor, which is located on the driver's side, on the right side of the block. Look in there, see if it's even plugged in. It could be just disconnected. Make sure there's no debris, any kind of frayed wire. We're going to unplug that. We're going to stick a couple probes in there and we're going to check to see if we have voltage. So I disconnected the sensor. I'm going to bring our little wire harness up here so we can actually get to it. We want to inspect it, make sure there's no broken wires, burned wires, connections look good, everything looks good here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our digital multimeter. We're going to turn it to DCV, direct current voltage, and we're going to cross these two probes and make sure that we have five volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our ignition on. We're going to use our digital multimeter. We're going to set it to DCV, direct current voltage, and we're going to check for five volts here. We're just going to take these probes, set them on the sides of the wire there in the harness, and check for five volts. We have five volts, so let's further inspect by removing the coolant temp sensor and checking it for resistance. We have our vehicle raised, we have our safety stands underneath, and we're getting ready to drain our coolant. Our coolant pedcock is located right near cross brace, real tight to get to, I'll identify it for you. Our radiator pedcock is located right here. We're just going to turn that counterclockwise capture some coolant and tighten it back up. Once you feel that you have enough coolant drain to replace your coolant temperature sensor, go ahead and close your pedcock. So after we drain the coolant down a little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our temperature control sensor. There it is right there. What we want to do is we want to check on ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our probes and we're going to touch them down there. We're going to look for some resistance. Check. It looks like we have an open loop. So that tells us that this sensor is bad. So we're going to order up a new one and replace it. What we want to do is we want to compare our original part to our replacement part. Make sure they look the same. 
Our connections are the same. Everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and test this one. Set our digital multimeter on ohms. Let's check. So our resistance is 1954, right around there. So what we have is resistance on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall this. Some of the replacement temperature sensors already have a ceiling on them. And we want to make sure that we do not over tighten this. It's 15 foot pounds. So use the proper sealant on the temperature sensor. When we get this all finished, we're going to top off our coolants and we're going to reset our codes, take it for a drive and see if everything works out correctly for us. So let's just go ahead and add some coolant. This is a 50-50 mix. Some is straight up. You may have to add water. We're going to use 50-50. Great for this application. We're going to top this off. So let's go ahead, turn our ignition on, wait for it to link. Okay, our code came up. Now we're going to want to erase all the codes. So we're going to erase, erase, erase was successful. So let's go ahead, test drive our vehicle. So there you have it. Simple solution to this car's problem was the engine coolant temperature sensor. That would explain why our customer was complaining about drivability conditions, fuel consumption, and the light on the dash. Sometimes you'll even get a rough idle and the car could run rich. Right now, everything seems great and we checked our DTC and this car is fantastic.